Seekers, I'm Sajal Patel, and this is the place for modern mamas looking to create a luxurious feeling life. From where? From the inside and out, through yoga, meditation, and mindfulness. And today is for you modern mamas who are struggling to get rid of that post-pregnancy stubborn, stubborn, stubborn belly fat. And this is a broader approach than the typical, you got to exercise, try the latest diets, um, you know, to eat plant-based, unprocessed foods. This is really about getting to the core of that fat and finding ways that will bust that fat. And this, under, this means that we have to understand how our body fat works a little bit. So the fat that you can kind of press on your little pudgy, little cute belly is your subcutaneous fat. And underneath that is the visceral fat. And this does not get a lot of attention because it's not visible. However, if we don't bust this layer, you're never going to be able to see that beautiful six pack that lies underneath. So today's techniques are a broader approach to really busting that belly fat. So here's tip number one. Stop stressing and worrying about losing weight. And this sounds like, well, how's that going to work? Here's the thing. Whenever you stress out, you release a stress hormone called cortisol. Cortisol increases your appetite. And not your appetite for salads and green juices and smoothies. It increases your appetite for all of those unhealthy, savory, and sweet dishes chocolate and oh my gosh I need that bag of chips yeah the stuff that your belly does not need so then you're going to eat a little bit of that stuff unmindfully of course and then you gain a little bit more weight and then you stress out and then you release cortisol and then you gain weight and so it's the cycle that is never ending so how do we bust this well, we increase more stress-releasing activities into our life. A lot of people try to release our thoughts. If we think positively and if we think we're going to eat healthy, we're going to eat healthy. And we all know how stress eating and how powerful stress eating is, right? So even if you're the most advanced yogi, it takes a lot of willpower. And I found that increasing more stress-releasing activities helps balance my mind, it helps release that stress and it makes me feel happy. So what things can you do? Well, yoga, meditation, soaking in a warm tub with essential oils, doing a puzzle, reading leisurely. Um, my favorite recently is adult coloring and doing Zen Tangle. So anything that really helps you release stress, calm your mind down, slow down your body, did you notice I didn't say drinking wine, watching TV, scooping through Facebook? Yeah, these things, though you may think are relaxing, stimulate your nervous system, stimulate your mind. So you're not really relaxing. So you want to pick activities and hobbies. Think childhood, what you enjoyed. And of course, working out never harms you. But do a workout that you enjoy, like ride a bike or go for a walk or, you know, play tennis if that's something that you enjoy. Do things that you really enjoy and you will stay continuously inspired to do them and feel really good about yourself. The second tip is eating more mindfully. When we're trying to juggle so many things like us multitask minds are, we don't eat mindfully. That's the number one thing that goes to the wayside. We watch television while we're eating. We're doing our work in front of our computer while we're eating. And what tends to happen when we do this is that we eat not enjoying our food. We eat a little bit more than we should. And then it starts the pattern of becoming stressed out. So how do we incorporate being more mindful? Well, we do one task at a time. And though this might sound hard for us multitasking women, start with eating. Eating and not doing anything else except eating. Sitting down at the table. 
And I have a blog that will walk you through how to eat mindfully. And I'm going to set the link up there. Watch it after this blog and really learn how to be fully present when you're eating. And the beauty of it is that you'll eat less and feel more satisfied. The third technique is a Kundalini breathwork technique called breath of fire. And now this is really going to bust and work your visceral fat. And you can do this technique when you're driving, when you're working out, when you're cooking. Um, you can do it literally anywhere. And the beauty when you do this when you're working out, they say in Kundalini Yoga that if you're doing one minute of an exercise with breath of fire, it's like doing 11 minutes of it. So it's really important to know. So the easiest way to learn this is put your hands on your belly. And it's a rapid rhythmic breath in and out through your nose. As you exhale, you're going to pump your navel back to your spine. And as you inhale, you're just going to naturally let your stomach expand out. So it looks like this in slow-mo. So your breath and your navel pumping is going to be synchronized. If you find that you get lightheaded or your breath pattern's out of whack a little bit, go to long deep breathing and make sure that your inhale and exhale is equal. And if, something to remember for women, if you're on your period or if you're pregnant, you do not want to be doing this breath. And eventually within a practice, you're going to look like this. Really powerful breathing in and out through your nose that will bust that belly fat by the navel pumping. So remember, your body is a post-miracle body. Shift from your thinking of comparing yourself to that pre-pregnancy 21-year-old body. Your body is different. Your body has changed. But you can feel healthy and confident and really fit. Just focus on feeling healthy now, nourishing your body now, finding energy now, and really honoring this new body that you're in. It nourished a child. It's continuing to nourish your child if you continue to breastfeed. And you know what? Don't ever change that post-miracle body for ever wanting that pre-miracle body because now you do have a miracle and you don't ever want to wish that you never had that miracle. So I certainly, certainly hope this serves you well. If you enjoyed this, certainly subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want daily inspiration, you know where to head. Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, we always are sharing daily inspiration. But like you know, the most important conversations happen after the blog. So head over to SecretSeekers.com and I have a question for you. What is one of your stress-releasing activities that you do? This is one of the hardest things for most of us to kind of wrap around our brain, what we can do. So set some inspiration our way of what inspires you, what makes you feel calm, and let other people be inspired by that. And if you found this helpful, certainly share it with one of your modern mama, family, friends, and colleagues who would benefit from this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time on another Aspita Seekers episode. Thank you.